If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear All listener. Right. This is Drutk. Oh. <coughs> or Drutk. His 24th song. No, his 24th spring. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, this is from the True Cult. Uh, that's one of our alliances. If you're interested in finding out about alliances and how to influence the song list there, jump on Patreon. It's uh, You can start out at a dollar a month, so it's, it's not too steep. Vinny likes to make everything fair. <laughs> uh, and what's wrong with that, <laughs> you evil woman? Well, it's fine when it works in my favor. <laughs> Winner of Rangers Member Week playlist. How do you say it? Drug... Drudk. Drudk. Uh, they're an atmospheric black metal band yes! from Ukraine. Okay, okay. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the it. The lyrics to this song originates from the poem entitled Spring uh, by Bogdan Igor Antonich in 1933. All right. Let's check it atmospheric out. Atmospheric black metal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Drudk or Drudk. Somebody, somebody, um, somebody get me a proper pronunciation for that. I hate when people mispronounce stuff and they go, oh, it's well, a foreign well, language. It's like, yeah, but you can ask. Well, so yeah. somebody phonetically help me pronounce this band's name so I could get them the proper respect they deserve. All right, guys. It's Drudk. It's true. I shouldn't assume that you're right on that. Drudk. Drudk. All right, guys. Here we go. Drudk. And uh, this is his 24th spring. Let's make it happen, inshallah. Okay. Loving the melody.
That was Judka. That was 10 minutes? Judka, yeah, Judka. Okay. Did it feel like 10 no. minutes or no? No, it didn't at all. Did you like the song better than you liked the song before? I did. Okay, okay. So, what, what was the main difference? Well, it has a lot. It had a lot more beauty to it, and also lyrically, um, I found some of it relatable. So we don't have like, uh, oops, let me pull that back up there. Whoop. Uh, we don't have, like, I think every place is different as far as what spring. Like, if we move to Florida, spring is not what it is here. Right. Like, because he says a cold evening is not uncommon. Spring, a high, deep, bottomless evening. Heavy dream from fragrance of, from fragrance of wet pine trees in a dewy starry night. Get out of the house alone. You'll find yourself in the arms of frosty silence. The evening whispers you in a young dance. I just uh, full of silver sparks of dew. And, and I know that we have a translation here. So it's so beautiful in English here that it's got to be amazing if you could hear it in its original tongue. Yeah. Um, and so I looked up the guy that the song was based off of. And the, the poet? There was a pretty cool quote. Um, where did it go? Is it this one? Yeah. Uh, he combines the principles of imagism with a life-affirming paganism inspired by Lemko Forklow. He declared himself a pagan in love with life <laughs> and a poet of spring intoxication. Cool. I like that. I really like that phrase. I like that, uh, yeah. Poet of spring intoxication. That's, That's funny, really and I like a pagan in love with life. Yeah. <laughs> I liked both of them, but the other one kind of stuck out to me more. Um, so I've always had this... If you're around, like, season changes, I don't know if everybody that kind of loves nature is like this um, or if this is even very relatable. And it's not something that I've really ever communicated out loud um, because maybe I felt I was sort of alone in it. But when he said, a high, deep, and bottomless evening, that was like, whoa. Because I've always felt like there are times of the year that I feel like something is close to me and something is far from me. So in the summertime when it's really hot and it's, like, kind of, clammy and like everything is like the the planets everything just kind of seems closer and i feel less lonely and as fall comes around everything starts pulling farther away and the the weather itself just kind of feels more distance and in the dead of winter it feels very far away that's interesting. um and springtime also still has this like i'm coming but not there yet i don't know it makes me feel a little bit emotional um but I felt I've always felt that through the seasons change, even since I was really young, um, like a child, even. So I, I thought it was really interesting for him to say that because I was like, I wonder if, obviously, again, we're talking. There's a translation thing, so it sounds like he's communicating the same thing, like high, deep, bottomless evening, and that's how some of those cold sort of spring times feel to me as well. Um, but yeah, I I envy his ability to be able to get out of the house alone in the night and you know obviously you know we talk about this whenever this comes up mostly um that you know men have certain privileges that women don't have or maybe it depends on where you're kind of stationed maybe there are some places that are more safe for women to kind of get out by themselves but that's kind of an unfortunate um thing when you live in a world where crimes happen so you can't just get out alone and just feel nature as a whole because you can always like wonder if something's around the next <laughs> something's around the river bend. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's an interesting thought. How much would you do like on a realistic you know, how how often would you do that if you if you felt completely oh, safe to do that? Every day probably. At it's, night? I love being out at night. It's like right around 10 o'clock. That's my favorite time. I also like being out during the day, like, like with the sun, cause I need the sun. Um, but as far as an evening time thing, like I love, I love walking at night. I love being outside at night. The sounds, the way that everything looks, the kind of feel like whenever you and I would take those walks at night, like it, I liked that. But I do think that it's important, like, when he says get out of the house alone, like, the aloneness aspect of it has its own, you know, when, where I lived previously, I mean, there was still, you know, I mean, the train tracks went through our property. So, I mean, <laughs> anybody can ride the train and jump jump off. Right. So, I mean, there was still, 
there's still it still had like that vibe of like maybe this is dangerous but i felt like for the most part it probably wasn't because it was like well if you were going to jump off like why would you like that's a pretty random jump off like let's just jump off in sorry's backyard because they wouldn't know you know what i'm saying right so i felt like it was probably safe and so i used to go out there you know a lot and i had snowshoes i'd go out in the winter like when it was snowing oh my word that was like unbelievable though the the level of silence that you get during a snowstorm is and he says you'll find yourself in the arms of frosty silence um so i i really i'm i'm vibing with his lyrics uh and then he says from the marble dreams imagination thoughts the reeds sway all in dew stars mix into a strange ball one of them um will f- fall quietly into the grass and so I'm not sure what he's talking is going to fall into the grass because it One almost sounded stars. like a star was, but yeah. I feel like, <laughs> I don't know if it's, I've never heard of a star falling quietly in grass like that, like. Well, he's, he is connecting the dew to the stars. So it's basically in his mind, the star falls from the sky to the earth and then manifests as the dew. Oh. in the next morning so you're basically seeing little stars on the ground oh that's really cute you can see right there it says uh imagination imagination thoughts the reed sways all in dew stars mixed up into a strange ball one of them quietly fall into the grass oh that's cool i like that so he's he's which <sighs> which is really kind of like a it's an interesting thought about I was, you know, outside with the kids yesterday, and Razor said, "Plane, it's just a plane." And then Orion's like, "There's no plane." And then I'm like, "Well, what's that?" He's like, "It is a plane." And they're both like, you know, and I was like, "Razor, you want to go on it?" He's like, "Yeah, bring it down." You know, whatever. He did, yeah. aww. And like, you know, that wonder that 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 kids have, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that everything is amazing, and then I, you know, I remember that. being a Look kid. At that. Yeah, like, I remember being a kid, and you don't really know what things are. So it's like, you know, the shiny stuff on the ground. It's like, oh, this is this Oh, is the crystal. mica. When you find mica. Yeah. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is valuable. The, just the adults don't know it yet. Yeah, 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 exactly. You just find stuff, and you're like, oh, wow. And, you yeah. Know, so that's what the poetry the, the poetry. Do you remember mica? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. if Maybe everybody certain, knows what mica is. I was certain I was rich. It's like this chunk of almost you. It looks like a rock, kind of, but you can like literally peel it like little pieces of paper off, and the pieces of paper are like thin, and you can see through them, but they're also shiny, and they oh, yeah. catch the light, and uh, it. <laughs> but it's weird because it's in the tar. Like you'll see the tar glittering. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'd always be like, "This is like the streets of gold." But what is going on? How come but, the parents but don't yeah, know that, this? That was one of. Them. I remember riding my bike on like newly tarred ground, and everything was sparkly. And yeah. The ride was, and so I pretended that I got you know shot up into space. We we're in a different planet. All oh, this shit. absolutely. And then like uh, you grow up, and like people just 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 completely strip the wonder of everything away. But. Again, that's like one of the positives of you know either having children of your own or being around, being around other little kids is because they'll they're, it's all there. The wonders there. There, Orion found these <laughs> like you could buy these bags of rocks at the dollar store, like they're basically like these smooth pebbles, and um, they're see through kind of. Yeah. And he found somebody you know threw some of them in their garden or whatever, and he was like he found two of them. And he brought them to me. He was like. His eyes were so big, I could tell on the look. I said, he thinks he found really, like, something really crazy. And I was like, I am not telling him I can get those at the dollar store. I was like, what? I made a big deal. You found treasure. And he was, like, that made him even more excited. Uh, It was really cute. Of course, then he put one in his mouth, so I had to take it away from him. And uh, that was that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, I I really think, like, that's probably one of the... 50,000 reasons I'm so fascinated with Don Hoffman stuff on consciousness or even the UFO phenomena. The Don Hoffman stuff on consciousness like is such a paradigm shifting understanding of what you call oh, reality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that it reinserts a bunch of wonder into everything. It does. It was interesting. He was he was doing an interview with Lex Friedman a couple days ago or whatever, and he says he's like, 
That's some awareness. He's That's disturbed. So funny. He's disturbed. <laughs> he's disturbed by the implications of what he's saying, mm-hmm. especially the mathematical side of it. Because yeah, the more you prove these things with math, the the less wiggle room you have. Mm-hmm. And so the idea that the 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 physical universe isn't really uh, fundamental, and that you know these are. Um, Space time is a is a projection, not space and time, but space time mm-hmm. itself is a projection from conscious agents. Who it just opens up so many possibilities oh, about yeah. a lot of things, yeah. and, it, and it and it it disturbs him. But I think because I have a Christian backstop, I'm not disturbed because I'm like, well, yeah, there's an ultimate consciousness, and he's projecting all this, and and we are, you know, observing reality from the consciousness field. From a borrowed consciousness, basically. So I, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not worried about it at all. But I, but Hoffman was extremely disturbed because he understands yeah. it's a completely untethering. Exactly, kind it of opens idea. everything up to like this giant, there, yeah. And untethering, I think, is the perfect yeah, word for it. Yeah, rooted in anything, right? You yeah. know, now like everything is just yeah, you know. yeah. So it, 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 for a moment, it looked like he was almost regretting stumbling upon this amazing discovery <laughs> so because sad. he can't fall it's back so on materialism too. yeah um, yeah i can see it so we've been like watching <laughs> people are gonna be like you're crazy uh we've been watching a lot of this like alien stuff and people's different stories and stuff and like some of these reports that are that are coming out i like they i guess they're being released by the government C- correct me if any place where I'm wrong because I've literally seen so much stuff and sometimes I'm half awake when I'm listening to it. I mean, I can't correct you. I can just repeat back to you. That's what, what I mean. Like, if, if that was I'm just not saying that what... that doesn't necessarily mean it's correcting you, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, if I'm saying something, you're like, yeah, we never saw that. <laughs> that wasn't your dream story. Uh, so anyway, I guess, like, they're thinking that maybe, like, some of these UFOs are not coming from, like, outer space, but rather from the ocean. Which to me is like such a scary thought because I really like the ocean, but I have always had like this, like that sort of feel about the ocean that it's like not really completely safe because it's not. I mean, you, 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 yeah, you're like, I love this, but especially if you go to the ocean at night. Um, But anyway, putting all that aside, when we were growing up, we came up under a theology that was, uh, it was called the rapture. Probably a lot of you people know what it is, but maybe people don't. I don't know. It was that God could return, like, literally at any second, and you could get sucked away, and, uh... It, you probably all, you mo- ro- all you rot non-believers would be left with tri- the <laughs> Antichrist! <laughs> Mo- uh, more than likely, all your clothes would just get left in a heap, possibly folded. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of weird things. But anyway, the I- but the exciting and fun thing was that, like, at a moment's no- but notice, you could be snatched away. So, you know, you're a kid, you're grounded, you're, you're in your, your very hot, overly warm bedroom that you're going to be in for the next 48 hours because you're grounded and you're thinking to yourself you're hoping to get bailed out by the rapture <laughs> the rapture could happen so, never, so i'd be watching the sky i'm like it's, it looks like it's coming you know it, when there's an ominous storm so whatever. It, it never occurred to you that being that you were punished you might have gotten left behind no because the pun like, <coughs> like even i felt like that's a little steep you know so i didn't clean my room you know what I mean? So there was, it was I okay. felt like, yeah, God I didn't, wasn't I didn't to feel like you from I never up. felt like God was angry for, with me for not cleaning my room. <laughs> that, which is funny because I've, I've never even thought processed that until you just asked the question. But anyway, so there was like always this like there's there could be some excitement. Then we kind of came into some different ideas and we're like, that's not at all. That was talking about 70 AD. That's already passed. None of that's going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. So now this alien stuff comes up. I'm like, wait a minute. There might be some excitement left around here. What if something came out of the ocean? Things have come out of the ocean. Yes, well. I mean, that that's. What if I saw something coming out of the ocean? Then some of these reports of the people and what they're. It's crazy. But anyway, this is not about UFOs. This is about this is about the seasons and the beauty of the world and um, and and poetry. And I really really liked this one. This one is actually a nine point one for me. I'm not flipping the thing this time. <laughs> it it, it uh, yeah. Would you give it nine point one? It's a nine dot four for me. I I like the song. I like that they spent some time on it. I should let you go first. When, when you when you when you make a song pass beyond like seven and a half minutes, like you, you are you are making a bet. Yes, you are. 
right? You're making a bet. And more often than not, it fails miserably. Yeah, go back and look at the review it's, for Harlequin Forest from him. Yeah, especially <laughs> with me. Like, I should... Yeah, exactly. Harlequin Forest is a perfect example of a song that that would have probably been a classic yeah, song Opeth. had it been, you know, two and a half minutes of it would have been deleted. That would have been great. Um, I um, felt it was all necessary. But. 9.4, I really, really enjoyed this song, though. I, I like the atmosphere of shit, but, but I agree with you. Like, I, I'm definitely... It's fascinating, like, this UFO stuff is really making me appreciate all of the advances we've made as human beings in the scientific endeavor. Hmm. Why? Because, I mean, presumably, these craft, these beings have been interfacing with, with our species for thousands of years, for yeah. millennia. Yeah. And it's just now that we're able to even theorize a non-supernatural or you know it, it's a hard hard way to explain it but but a, a a non for me my goal probably for the rest of my life is is science is very very fascinating to me because the more i look at it the less i see the gap between the supernatural mm. and the natural yeah um so anyway it's going to go on a uh, it's going to go on a big tangent but i was like it, yeah i feel like, it, it songs I feel like, like I this much about nature and things like that like we've made a lot of progress as human beings so these beings whatever they are you know we we're the only we're the we're the generation of human beings closest to coming to any sort of explicable definition of what we're actually looking at and seeing oh, and I all see, the rest of it. so to me uh -huh. i'm just proud of i'm proud of human beings that story so. last night that we were listening to from that guy was so believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The redneck guy. Yeah. One hundred. I believe him 100%. It was so believable. 100%. And the reason that he gave for wanting to share the story even made it more believable. Oh. Because he's like, everybody that's happened to is like dead. And I'm basically the only one left. So he's like, I don't want... He, he basically it was for posterity and he felt like it would be important for future generations to kind of know what happened. Yeah. And it, and it looked like, you know, he doesn't... He's like, I don't... He, it was weird because he didn't even think the story was that big of a deal. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie, though. Like, when extraordinary things happen to you, you're experiencing them as you, and it completely demystifies it. So there's probably things where people would be like, oh, my God, but to me are. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I see that. All right. All right, true cult. You're you're bringing it. That last song was good. That last song was good. <laughs> we have more songs on the way. Vin out. Story out. Gone.